Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Um, it's time to catch up on something that I'm about to do and I realized I've never given you an episode on how to do fret markers. I got some easy ways uh, to blow them out fairly quick and easy and I'm going to share those with you. Okay guys, I want to give uh, my friend Hazy Days in Cardiff, Wales a shout out. Um, I subscribe to his channel, check him out. He builds guitars live on his channel and some other stuff. But he put a CD together. He uh, wrote the music, played the music. I mean, he did the graphics, he did everything. I think he even extruded the plastic for the CD cases. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give you a link below. Um, click on this. Um, he, the stuff is Jake Buggy, um, the kind of stuff you'd uh, expect to come out of the UK, easy to listen to, um, and it'll be what's going on in the background during this episode. Again, down in the comments section will be a link. And while we're here, don't forget to give me a like. Uh, a subscribe and especially if you subscribe and notification of course my playlists are there as well you know I've got a lot of followers in England so I know quite a bit about England um, I've got some stuff that we've done about England I mean there's the Queen remember this one the uh, the practice amp kit I'll give you a link to that episode yeah I've got a lot of stuff from the UK like Dutch that's in the UK ain't it all right, we've switched to the overhead. Want to do one more thing here? Hey, check it out. I got these vinyl stickers now and these buttons and some t-shirts and stuff. So things are starting to roll in. Uh, I've got an email. Talk to me about this if you really need this stuff. Anyway, my friend Melly, who lives out here where I live, uh, is moving to Oklahoma. And one of the things I got to get done before um, she leaves is this Oklahoma license plate guitar here and I'm in the middle of it um, I'm about ready um, to take uh, the clamps off notice that these clamps I use yeah I, I went right straight to the fingerboard but uh, they have rubber on them so it didn't mar anything you always want to remember that I'm going to put um, yeah, I can run a clamp and talk at the same time. You want to remember that I'm going to put matchbooks over the top of this. And one of the questions I frequently get about the use of matchbooks is, how do people know where they're at in terms of fretting if this is covered with matchbooks? Well, I guess they can learn the matchbook that's going to be there. I've got uh, the decals ready to throw on here some of these are pretty interesting you're going to see this one and a couple of things that were special this person they actually collected these matchbooks themselves but they're going to go all the way down here so my fret markers are actually going to have to be right along the side here now you notice that this fingerboard is fairly narrow um, and so when it comes to different solutions for using fret markers you, you got to kind of figure out um, how how big they are uh, their diameter and how they'll work here without getting too close to the top of the fingerboard the worst thing you can do is drill in here and then chip this out or something like that so where i'm at on this guitar right now well let's run through what i've done so far and kind of do a review on the basics of building one of these things now you remember my uh, scarf joint jig i've already cut a headstock out and then i just clip in a long piece of neck board and we'll just fire this isn't that simple you know once that's cut uh, again you've seen this before uh, these match up I glue this in place um, I use remember the doweling that I use I put dowels right here that get hid underneath the fingerboard um, before I glue this on of course I draw everything out uh, and then take it to the scroll saw once that's done then I glue everything together and end up with this you've seen this all before now before I put the fingerboard on 
me get some of the stuff out of the way here. Before I glue on the fingerboard, I need to go to the router and, and figure out where everything is going to fit together. In this case, I've got a two-piece uh, kit here that is going to drop down here. So this will drop down like so, down into there. So I need to route that down. And then this piece goes over the top that accepts the license plate. That drops down in there. And you guys remember that I take these apart and use a, a pretty big bridge that's going to go on a license plate here. And my pickup will sit right here. But in order for all this to work and for it to be at the right height, I've got to route this down. So it's a lot easier, believe me, on the router that you do the routing for all that stuff without the fingerboard. Because if you're doing it with the fingerboard on, it adds this much here that's not here. So you're always trying to balance it and rock it back and forth. So we're at a point right now where I'm happy with the way everything is. And I've glued my fingerboard on overnight and let it dry up. But you see there's parts sticking out on the side of it here. This knot is not permanently attached. That's just there to make sure everything was lined up. Again, remember the episode on scale and intonation where we took a yardstick and figured out where everything is going to be and line up so we don't have any mistakes. Anyway, I am going to go sand this down, get this right, because it's time to put fret markers here, and I want to do that before I do anything. There's a reason why, and it has to do with measuring. Okay, you, you don't need to watch me sand this. You can take my word for it. I'm going to do that, and we'll work on it once we get back. But I want you to notice something here. This fingerboard is fretted already, and, and this one is not. So uh, why do I want to sand this down and get this done and mark the finger uh, or the, the fret marker locations before uh, the thing is fretted? Well, it's a lot easier, and let me show you why. Okay, so here's a fingerboard, and, and typically people put uh, fret markers in at the 3rd, 5th, 7th, 9th, and 12th. Now, I usually put a coin underneath uh, the neck at the 12th fret, so you know where it is. When you slide that slide down, you can, you can feel your finger drop down into where the buffalo head nickel is or whatever. But how do, we, how do we know where to put the frets? Well... You know that you don't put the fret marker right on the third fret. You put it in between the second and third fret. And that denotes that there's going to be, uh, that, that where that marker is, the next one down is the third fret. So you wouldn't put the third fret. I've, I've still got to cut this one off. This is the end. So I would cut here. So one, two, three. I'm going to put that right here, not here. You see that this groove is down here. Yeah, my neighbor, my new neighbor that thinks that this is a Super Bowl of motocross is out there, I hope isn't drowning you out. But anyway, how do I know uh, where that is? Um, there's a pretty easy way to do this. Um, rather than mark in the middle and running something straight down the middle, I can just basically take a straight edge, and we're going to be at one, two, three. If my fret marker needs to be right there. I'm going to take this straight edge here, like so, and put it at the end of the line of the third fret, and do the same thing at the end of the line of the second fret. And then I'm just going to draw across here, like so. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to do the same thing here. Mark this way. That intersection right there will give me the middle in my dot. Then I can take... A small square and say it's over here I don't have to mark all the way across but if I know that dot is right there I just make a mark there and then when I flip this over like so I can just do a mark right there and then I would lay this out all the way down wherever I want my frets now let me show you something pretty cool here it's one of my prized possessions I used to buy my necks from Darren Dukes and um, when he closed out his shop I got some necks that were that were partially done and this is one of them I got and I'll never make anything out of this because it's a perfect example 
of, of what I'm talking about. He has gone, I hope you can see here, he has gone one, two, this is where the third fret uh, is. So he's got the markers right there, you see that? And he used the technique that I just described and marked it out all the way. Of course, when you're doing this, you don't have to um, uh, go through and, and mark all these out. You could basically uh, just make marks where things come together. But the, the fret markers are already in here. Uh, they're still a little bit rough and need to be sanded down. But the nice thing about this is if you do it this way, once you're done, you just run down like this. Uh, this stuff comes off and you've got your fret markers. But that's basically how you do it. It's, it's just simple triangulation of here, here, uh, here with a square. That mark gives you a mark there. And then this is just as simple as taking this, knowing that that's X, how deep that is, where the center of that is, uh, making a mark here, down here, and drawing a center line all the way down with a straight edge. Pretty easy stuff. All right, we're back at the bench with this thing. It come out nice and smooth, um, both sides. And of course, uh, this is going to be a right hand guitar, so our work is going to be up here. Oh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this while we're here. Um, you'll notice I don't really round off my my necks all the way over and do a round over. Instead, I kind of keep them square. There's a couple reasons for that. If you're working a slide, they always tell you keep your back, your fingers underneath sliding up straight up and down. Uh, that helps you with that. Um, and it kind of looks a little bit more rustic. But I can take a sure form or a light plane or something and go along and get this rounded off like so. I've got some more work to do here. I just don't want anybody um, hanging up their hand um, and do both sides like that. And there's more work to do here. Um, hey, check this out. I had MGB, uh, Michael, another shout out to you. They're countless nowadays. But what I'm going to do is the theme on this is Oklahoma. So I'm going to take... Oklahoma road map and lay it up on the headstock and then I'm going to put one of these route 66 Signs up here. I've got everything centered up to be able to do that That'll be pretty cool But back to back to putting the fret markers in and doing that before I fret this thing um, I turned this up and we already talked about how to mark mark things off So, you know, you always want to make sure that you mark off um, this is not the first fret. This is one, two, three. So our fret marker will be there. Three, four, five. I'll have one here. Six, seven. I'll have one here. And then I'm going to jump down to 12. I don't usually mark off nine. Now, here's a trick to this. If somebody is using this and you've got this covered up with these matchbooks and you know most clubs are dimly lit. You want to really think about what you're using here because they're still going to depend on these fret markers. So you got to be able to see them. You certainly, I don't like using black fret markers unless this is almost pure white. Um, so I try to use something that's visible and I keep that in mind. Now, what do would we use for fret markers? Well, let me give you a couple hints on things that are pretty cheap. Um, first off, you might think about using golf tees. You simply cut the end of this off like so, get it flat. You find out what hole size you need. Now, get in the habit of having a piece of wood that has your different drill bit sizes so you know um, this drill bit holds the golf tee snugly. Uh, this drill bit uh, holds a nail. Now, you could also use these. You would... Uh, take a nail and a good set of dice and you just basically cut the end off like that. You know how deep your hole is. Use an appropriate size bit. When you know how deep that hole is, you could pound this down. You could cut it and then pound it down and make sure that your hole is drilled the proper way. And when you pound it down, you just flush this out. You don't really want to do a bunch of filing of metal. And in fact, you would want to file that down before you drove it down into the fretboard. Um, these take different size bits and you want to think about if I'm going to use a golf tee, I'm certainly not going to put that 
uh, maybe I'll put it closer to here and I might actually go down into the neck. My hole to receive this might be further down than up here. The last thing you want to do is put something up here and have it chip out and ruin your fingerboard and then you're trying to use wood putty and all that kind of thing. I'm going to show you something else that's really cool. This is a flexible plastic. I'm not even sure what it's made out of. It's certainly not metal. It's plastic of some type or another. But these are flexible and they take, uh, you just take a small drill bit and you uh, drill the hole, push it down, cut it with a flush cut saw, and then you just sand it. And the next thing you know, it's perfect. It's got good contrast. So think about this. So common things again, a golf tee. The good thing about a wood golf tee is what you might do is when you know where your hole is, you'll you'll almost uh you'll cut it and push it down almost all the way and you could put a tad bit of some type of uh glow in the dark paint or something like that on it let it dry and then tap it down uh with a rubber mallet that doesn't mar the paint and that would give you some really high contrast here but let's use one of these and i'll show you how to mark it out and drill it in i've got a scrap piece of uh fretboard here uh, that's got the frets in it already. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use that and kind of show you how I did it. Now, let's say that you've decided to wait until your frets are in. That makes it a little bit more difficult to measure, but it's not the end of the day. So what we would want to do is, number one, we want to find out how thick our fretboard is. Well, this fretboard is eight millimeters thick, meaning the center of it is at four so just before that five is four I would make a mark there so I know where that is um, now I can take a straight edge and I can go let me get lost here. I've already marked this out but if I put that straight edge where that fret line is this is why it's easier to do this before you put the frets in but I use that fret slot right there and I just draw a line there and there down here. You see, you see how those lines are marked out. Then I can take a straight edge. I can go from the top of the fret line, giving myself room for the width of the pencil. You want to make sure your pencil is sharp. And go down to the bottom of the fret line where it meets the neck board. And I just make a mark like so. And then I turn it over, do the same thing like so. And I've got my middle directly between the two frets. You see that? Now, hey, I want to show you something pretty cool. I take this blue painter's tape. I don't need this to go halfway down through the fingerboard. Uh, I just need it to go down a tad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of flapper tape on here like so. Uh, and then when I go to drill this, as soon as this starts hitting flush and flapping around, I can see it. I'm deep enough. Now... Uh, something I want to show you here is, if I can find it, the all is always your friend. If I start drilling around and trying to, if I make a mistake here, I'm going to mar up my fingerboard. That's very difficult to fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my all, I'm going to take my mallet, and I'm going to go to my spot where my fret marker needs to be. And I'm just going to give it a little tap like so. See there? Then I'm just going to take my drill. I'm going to put it right there. And again, this drill bit I know fits this snugly. So I'm just going to pop that on there. I'm going to drill down. Let me see if I can turn this to where you can see it. I'm just going to drill straight until that flapper tape hits. I'm going to pull it out. And then I can just push this in like so. Once it's in there, I just take my flush cut saw. Make sure I don't cut my fingers off. And just pop it off like that. Then I'm going to take some sandpaper and just touch that up. And um, I'm good to go. Now, if this fingerboard were uh, painted or were a darker color, this would be uh, really standing out at you. So again, you would do the same thing. If I wanted to put a brad nail in there, I would just simply do the same thing. Find the middle. 
I know that my because that flapper is on there that I would have to cut this off about right there I would just simply mark that um, drill down and then once this is in I would just tap this down this is I would prefer not to cut this off while it's in here but I would rather have it cut off to the length I need where I can just push it in there like that let me do one okay over here I've taken and marked this one off um, and I'm going to take my awl never forget to do this with your awl because it's easier to drop into a hole to start with an awl there we go um, I put in a little bit bigger bit because the brad is is a bit bigger and now I'm going to take this I put my flapper paper on if I hold this like this then I just take my dikes I line up at the end using the end of the bit like this cut it nice and straight like so now I might want to be careful put this in a uh, vice grips and run it over the belt sander and make sure that that's nice and flat before I even start uh, let's do that all right there we go we put the uh, the flat end that we've taken on the grinder slip it in there like so and then we just simply tap it again before you give it your last tap you want to make sure that everything there is nice you don't want anybody hanging their finger on this you give it one of those if you need to and then you just pop it right in there you go perfect all right last one is the golf tee i've cut the pointed end off i know that um, i have to use a bigger bit so i just use the same depth put a flapper tape on it i know that if i hold this to here and make a mark here i cut my plugs like so um, i want to make sure that when i lay this out i may not want to put uh, this right in the center like i did the smaller ones instead because this is bigger i'm going to go down in here not past this but close to it because um, this is glued this is solid but again i certainly don't want to break that out so once i've drilled this hole out i just simply put the piece of golf tee in here um, now there's no reason why you couldn't take the golf tee and pound it in there and cut it off but I want you to think about something if I'm using wood and the wood matches this there's nothing stopping me from using some type of a, a latex paint or something and once I know I'm close again I didn't glue this once I know I'm close I can just put a dot of paint on there let it dry and then just simply tap it in and I know that it's nice and smooth and it's not going to hang up on anything and that will give me a really nice contrast uh, for the artist to see because you know these places are dimly lit now I'm going to pop these in quick and show you what it looks like and we'll call it a day All right, once they're cut off, I can take a fine piece of sandpaper and just run down my fingerboard like this. And once everything gets cleaned up, they stick out real nice. 
it's pretty simple. Now I can get on uh, putting my matchbooks on here and fretting things and getting closer to being done. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe. Always click the notification button and I will see you next time.